Kuala Lumpur is the capital of Malaysia and like any cosmopolitan city, it attracts people from all around the country. So um, as a result, the food follows suit, which means that you can pretty much find any Malaysian cuisine in Kuala Lumpur. And also Kuala Lumpur is the transit point for most visitors to Malaysia. Me, for instance, I always fly into Kuala Lumpur first, spend a couple of nights there before I then travel on to other parts of the country, which means that you might find me wandering around in Pataling Street in the morning looking for breakfast, that's uh, Kuala Lumpur's Chinatown, or you might find me having lunch or dinner in Brickfields, which is Little India, or in Kampung Baru, which is the Malay village in Kuala Lumpur. Or you might find me having supper, a late night supper, in Jalan Alo, which is the famous night market right in the middle of Kuala Lumpur. Pretty much anything you crave, you can find in Kuala Lumpur, which is why it's so special to me. We are in Kuala Lumpur, the capital of Malaysia. I'm very proud to say is that we have a lot of uh, interesting spots to visit in Kuala Lumpur. But... I have pinpoint three places of interest which you must not miss if you are in Kuala Lumpur. Okay, so we're doing curry laksa. Now, the curry laksa in particular from Kuala Lumpur because it just came in at the number two spot of best food experiences as listed by the Lonely Planet Guide. So I'm going to show you how to make it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make the laksa paste first and then we're going to make it in such a way that you can store it in jars in the fridge, in the freezer and then every time you feel like laksa you just take out some of the paste and add water or stock and coconut milk or coconut cream to it to turn it into laksa soup. I'm just going to go through the ingredients we're going to use. First of all, I've got some round onion here. My motto is to retain the the, the flavors of these dishes while trying to make them accessible. And that's why I use brown onion here. And I'm gonna blitz this in a food processor along with garlic, copious amounts of garlic, I like garlic. And one defining feature of curry laksa is that it contains curry powder. Like I'm gonna use some Malaysian curry powder here. Throw in some fresh chilies. You can use chili paste if you like. This is some minced lemongrass. I'm adding some Malaysian chili powder here. It's very mild, but it will give it a nice red hue, which is what we want to achieve with our laksa. Now, I've got some dried shrimp here. You can leave it out, okay? So we're just gonna blitz this. This is what you got here. And what we're going to do now, we're gonna fry it up. Decent amount of oil. You want a nice oily sheen on your laksa. I see too many versions of laksa here in Australia that look like that look like yellow pumpkin soup or yellow curry or something like that. Just transferring this in. Curry leaves and this is what you do with them. You just pull them off the stem and add them to your paste mixture. Now you want to fry this up. Now if you've got a fair bit of onion juice in this this will be quite wet, okay? In which case, I would actually fry it dry before I add any oil to it. And you know what? We're going to add the seasoning in this as well. Because remember, we want all the flavorings in the curry laksa paste itself. So that when you turn it into a soup, all you need to add is water and coconut milk, okay? So we're going to put some chicken powder here. And a bit of sugar. I like to add the oil in, in stages. Okay, you want a nice oil layer on your laksa. So what we want to do now is we want to actually poach the noodles and the all the condiments that are going in the laksa. So let's add some water to this. Now as far as the condiments, or laksa, uh, get a choice of vermicelli or Hokkien noodles or wheat noodles or a combination of both or you can have other types of noodles but those are the default noodles. Okay, if you're eating it at a hawker store, you might have some bean sprouts with it and some tofu puffs and some fish cake slices and some blood cockles or sea ham. In Australia, it's very hard to get decent blood cockles so I don't use it but I, I am boiling an egg in here just to 
bling it up a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm going to cook the egg at the same time as the water comes to a boil and then we're gonna poach the noodles and the vegetables and the other stuff that we want to use in this particular laksa. So I've got some choy sum over here which I really like. We're gonna use that in lieu of bean sprouts. I've got some egg noodles here. These are flat fresh egg noodles. You can find them at Asian grocery stores in the refrigerator section. And what we're going to use also are some prawns, some tofu puffs. The tofu puffs are like deep fried tofu. They're deep fried to the point where they're spongy. So the spongy nature of it means that it absorbs uh, stuff really well, which in this case would be the laksa soup. And I've got some shredded chicken here that we're going to use as a topping as well. Some coconut cream or coconut milk. I usually like to boil the, the stuff that go into the laksa separate to the soup. I do know that some people just make up the laksa soup and they cook the noodles in the soup itself. I don't like to do that generally, especially if I'm making a big amount because the, the, the noodles tend to be floury and it would just basically, and whatever else that you cook will also contaminate the flavor of the soup. I like the, the soup to be as pure in flavor as possible. That's why I'm poaching them in a separate pot of water. So let's throw in the noodles. I am going to cook the tofu puffs in the soup because like I said, the point of the tofu puffs is to soak up the flavor of the soup. The cooking time for the noodles will vary depending on the type of noodles you're using. Okay, so just follow the instructions on the packet. I'm just adding in the greens now and the prawns. For presentation purposes, I'm cooking them in the water. But if I were just eating it at home, I would cook them in the soup because I like the fact that the prawns will infuse the soup with more seafood flavor, right? Okay, so now we're going to make the laksa soup from the laksa paste. I've got a bit of, uh, you can use water or stock in your pan, bring it up to a boil. Laksa paste. Let's throw in the tofu puffs and add the coconut cream or coconut milk. Really up to you how creamy or coconutty you like your laksa. Okay, so we've got the noodles, the vegetables. Like I said, it's more typical for you to use bean sprouts in this and also vermicelli and Hokkien noodles, not these types of noodles. But to me, the most important thing is the soup. If you get the soup right, everything else falls into place. Tofu puffs. Right, if you have some Laksa leaves, what we know as laksa leaves, what in Australia is usually referred to as Vietnamese mint or Thai mint or coriander, Thai coriander, right? You can garnish it with that. There you go. Have a go at making it. Let me know how it turns out, okay? The first site you had to visit is a Petronas Twin Towers. So it used to be the tallest building in the world between the year 1998 to the year 2004. But now it's the tallest Twin Tower in the world. And uh, the, the Twin Tower, uh, the height of the Twin Tower is 452 meters above street level. It's 88 stories high. And at the 41st and 42nd floor, there is a sky bridge connecting Tower 1 and Tower 2. My recommendation for the visit to the tower is during the sunset. That is around 7 o'clock or 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. That's the best time to visit the Twin Tower observation area. All right, everybody. It's burger day in Malaysia. <laughs> burger. Well, I guess that's every day. But that's nonetheless, right. we're having burgers today. Got my burger shirt on. Burger chili patty. Burger chili patty. What are you thinking, Ivana? Uh, beef chicken, what are you thinking? Oh, look at this. This is a fancy menu. Wow. Mm, it seems to be as you move to the right, it gets better and better. So let's go all the way to the right. Double special with cheese. Ooh. Double special with cheese. I would say beef double special with cheese. Beef double special. Deal? Ivana, this burger is like five pounds in my hand. <laughs> This is going to be the greatest burger we ever had. Oh, it looks so good. Ivana, first things first. 
Let's talk about these guys working here. Amazing. It's just so fun to watch them work. This guy's in a flow state. He's constantly chopping and moving. They must have turned out like 40 burgers in the past 20 minutes. Right. Like they working so hard. This guy's awesome. I really hope this guy is getting rich. You know what I mean? He's just so like it's just so fun to watch him work. What an amazing thing. These burgers <laughs> are chili powder, chili sauce, and chili putties. Ooh, so that's why he's the spicy. chili putty Ramley. This guy's awesome, man. Just the, like the entrepreneurship, the branding, the hardworkingness. I really hope this guy's getting rich. And that burger looks amazing. We saw him making ours, and it was like, it was like hilarious. Huge, gigantic burger. Two pieces of beef, uh, chili powder, chili sauce, chili putties, a piece of cheese, and an egg wrapped around all of it. And the bun is like the smallest part. The patty itself is like a fistful of meat. <laughs> I'm telling you, this thing is five pounds. <laughs> and oh, also, they have Roti John. So we saw them making one, we're filming. He's like, you're making a movie? I'll give you a Roti John. So he's gonna serve us a Roti John too, which is like a submarine sandwich with Ramley beef, right. tons of chili in it. Oh, we got black pepper sauce on ours too. This thing's gonna be amazing, Ivana. Look at this thing. Okay, have the first bite. Wow, look at the size of the thing. Look at the bun on the it's bottom. Cute. It's a joke, it's a joke. The bun is like... Oh, the bun is smaller than the... <laughs> wow. Honestly, wow. this burger, it's touched my heart already. Just watching that guy work and him talking to us and him, hey man, make a video, make, make my thing popular. Oh, I hope, uh, I hope that guy's doing well in life. Okay, how is it? Oh, it's so good, you know. Oh. Oh, it's so good. It's quite spicy. Really? It's spicy and cheesy. And the Ramley beef has that unique Ramley flavor. So it's just Ramley, spicy and cheesy. And the, uh, the sauce is sweet chili sauce, a little bit sweet in there. Really nice. Mm. Wow. Mm. Oh, look at the chili. It's actually amazing. Look how big the burger is. My first two bites, I haven't touched the bun yet. <laughs> the bun is still fully intact. <laughs> two bites. Honestly, this video idea was Ivana's idea. Great idea, Ivana. We're at the National Palace. This is the official resident of the King of Malaysia. It serves as a landmark and symbol of Malaysia constitutional monarchy. This palace was opened way back in 2011. Hello everyone. Today we're going to do apam balik. Apam balik literally translated as uh, turnover pancakes. It has got simple ingredients, no yeast, so you can actually whip it up uh, easily in your kitchen. It's got peanut, other fillings like corn, margarine, up to one's uh, whims and fancies. It's very simple to make, it's yummy.
So we have done making it. It's also known as terang bulan because as you can see, it looks like a half moon or shape. So what you do once it's uh, cooked, the sellers will just cut it into pieces like that. Sometimes you can see um, really large uh, pancakes being sold outside uh, at the night markets. We call it pasar malam. The pans are as large as, I would say, maybe uh, 20 to 25 inches large or even bigger. And they will cut it into wages and sell it in pieces uh, all in the night markets here. So I hope you enjoy the recipe, which is very simple. And uh, try to make them at home. Happy cooking! Is it uh, like coconut pancake? Yeah, coconut milk sugar. Wow, that looks awesome. Yeah, very delicious. Wow, and you make it here all day? Yeah, every day you are a poor man. Every day, all day. Uh, every day. Uh, how, how many years already? 40 years. 40 years, same uh, place. Ah, uh, same place. Oh, wow. 40 years. Yeah. So there's a store with history here. Yeah. Wow. 40 years, young to all. Oh, can, I, can I see it again? Ah, uh, this is coconut. Okay, this is peanut. Oh. Ah, uh, wait, uh. Mm. you can see. Oh, uh, awesome. This is coconut. Coconut. Mm. Coconut. This how, how many minutes do you need to, to make it? How many? How many one minutes? Day, about 100 pieces. No, I mean like how many minutes? Ah, this one, ah, 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Ah, 20 oh. minutes. Oh. And this one, peanut, also 20 minutes. Wow. Ah. Oh, the, the smell here, I wish you could smell it in the video. It's, yeah. Wow, it's awesome. It's in a pizza hut. Wow. Yeah. Oh, we definitely need to, uh, to buy one. How do you sell it normally? In a package of... Yeah, I can cut the smaller one. One piece is one and a thirty cents. Wow, look at this. Do so you make all of this at home? Ah, uh, yeah, no, I make here only. Not here. How oh, you make here? Ah, uh, every day make here. Ah, not at home. You make no, here. No, no, at home. Seven yeah. is the things to put here. Wow. Ah, uh, every day like this. Sugar. Ah, uh, sugar. With flour. So sugar. you just make it like like you're feeling. You don't measure it. Just. Ah, uh, yeah. With your forty years experience uh, yeah. here. Yeah, forty oh. years. I don't know how to make. Close the eyes also <laughs> yeah. Wow, that is awesome. Uh, so, uh, okay, how much is one piece? This one, one and get 30 cent. Okay. Uh, this how one, 90 cent for one. 90 cent only? Ah, uh, 90 cent. Malaysia uh, thing very cheap. Malaysia very cheap. Ah, uh, very good country, <laughs> Malaysia. Okay, how many pieces we take? Uh, what do you want? How much? That, are you full? <laughs> yeah, we, we can uh, eat later. <laughs> okay, then... Uh, Every time uh, when I'm visiting these markets, I end up with a very full stomach. Ah, uh, yeah. So what is this? Just pepper? Pepper. Pepper and, and then soy sauce. Soy sauce. And then you eat it together with the toast. Yeah, you can eat the toast. You want to try it like no to no egg first. No egg first? Yeah, try Just the toast without the egg and then try it with the egg. Actually, before I came to Malaysia, I would never have thought that Chinese people like to eat toast. I always thought like toast is so typical German. I don't know why I thought that, but I was really surprised when I found out that Toast and egg is a typical Chinese breakfast, it is, right? I think like the whole world does that. Very good. Right? Mm. So this oh, is with cayenne butter. Very good, yeah. Mm. And then you dip it into the egg? Yeah. Actually, you, the, the traditional way to do it is you crack the yolk. Mm, okay. So you Go for it. Okay. okay, and, and then, then, then the mix the toast a little bit. Yeah. Wow, that looks awesome. Mm. Okay. Oh, I really love soft boiled eggs. Mm. Awesome, awesome breakfast. This is the best. <laughs> Sit up. Sit up, of course. <laughs> mm. Okay, now we are at the National Monument. Well, it was opened way back in February 1966. It was proclaimed a memorial park dedicated to 11,000 people who died during the 12 years of emergency in Malaysia. Uh, struggle, which struggle for freedom and against the Japanese occupation. Uh, 